Terence Crawford, one of the most feared welterweights. With a boxing record of 38-0, he is aiming to break the legendary record of Floyd Mayweather's 50-0 and, and become one of boxing's Hall of Famers. After his recent stoppage win over Sean Porter, Terence, looking hungrier and more ready than ever to conquer every single opponent of his. Errol Spence Jr. is a true artist when it comes to boxing. He punches people with a style that makes it nearly impossible not to get excited watching him. Errol is ranked as the fourth best pound-for-pound -pound boxer, and for good reason. Out of his total 27 bouts, he has 21 wins by knockout, making him one of the most feared men in the ring. The two welterweight titans really hate each other and want to solve their problems by breaking each other's faces. Will Crawford remain the welterweight champion for yet another year, or will Spence make one of the biggest comebacks in boxing and gain everything he deserves? This is Boxing Matrix. Enjoy this video. Terence Crawford is the current welterweight champion of the world and one of the best boxers the current era has seen. He has beaten many champions that were undefeated at the time of their fight. Names like Julius Ndongo, Jeff Horn, and Jose Benavidez. But his most notable win, and the win that put him on the map, was the one against Amir Khan. Amir, who had won his last two recent fights, wanted to test Crawford, and Terence was there to punish him. The pride of Omaha, Nebraska, did what he does best. He finds out their weaknesses and ruthlessly exploits them. Crawford's impact immediately reached Khan, who has a questionable chin. Away from Khan, but he probably won't see straight right hand. Coming forward, everybody felt conventional wisdom is that Khan's... Crawford stunned the opponent late in the first round with a chopping counter right hand, followed by a left hook for good measure. Oh, he scores a knockdown! Bob Crawford with a first round knockdown! He's been looking for Crawford. Final 25 seconds of round number one. He was floating along, calculating, and then, oh, did he wake up! Closing that gap now. There's a right hand. Khan was wobbled by another powerful punch at the end of the first frame, but the bell rescued him from the humiliation of a first round elimination. Crawford, another right hand! And Khan is wobbly again! Trying to stay up! End of one! Wow! Over the next few rounds, Khan maintained his composure, working the jab and keeping out of range. Boxing him, landing punches, utilizing the speed, and then there was just one mistake when Canelo got rid of him in the sixth, but Crawford just did that in the first. Crawford's about to set him up right now from a, for another big shot. You see Crawford. We will see. We will see when that next right hand lands. I don't oh, there's a body shot with the left hand. From Crawford. Yeah, I don't think he's recovered. I think he's slowly recovering, but Terrence needs to test him again and not allow him to fully recover. He needs to try to hit him with that same type of shot to get the same type of reaction. Combination from Khan. Khan puts that right hand so quickly behind that jab with that speed as he lands a right hand. Moment for Amir Khan, we will see. You know how calculating Bud is. You see Khan lunging forward, getting up beside himself. There There's is. a lead right hand from Crawford, and he comes with another sweeping punch as it backs up Khan. He's not wasting any punches, and that's Crawford. He's trying Crawford moved to a southpaw posture in the third round after beginning off in an orthodox position. He was initially less efficient in that stance, but he gradually regained his rhythm. The speed of Khan, so he's okay with Khan shooting that right hand. He's looking to counter him on the, on the way in. With the right hook, there it is. Hold on to is he felt he was the bigger man. Mm -hmm. As you see tonight, he's not the bigger man or the stronger man. But here, just still waiting, trying to time Amir, trying to get Amir. 
to make a mistake. Trying to counter him with something. There he is, take a half step back. He's looking for the right hook there. All the weight was on his lead foot. That southpaw jazz, the buzz fighter among the younger generation now 13 0 with 11 knockout score to knock out in the fifth against former title challenger Edis Tapley. What a night it's already He been. did a good job of keeping Khan guessing by starting with the body and working his way up to the head. So Crawford has to stay focused. He can't get caught up like Bomax said, which is looking for the knockout because Amir Khan, he's still throwing. Oh, there is that right hand. He survived it. That was nasty, wasn't it? All set up by the body punches from Crawford. There there the is. body goes upstairs, says that was low, does Khan. Crawford really doesn't care. He's on the attack. And right now, give me the assessment of the legs of Khan. They're just not stable. He's not wobbly. under his legs. You know, he's, he's not stable. That's man, that right hook. That's the shot that Crawford's trying to Oh, good body right shot hook. by Crawford. Trying to set the right hook up. Goes to the body again and then doubles it up with the left hand and goes upstairs as he's back to an orthodox stance now and clubs with a right hand, sweeps across the belt line, looks for glory, lands on the left to the body. He has got momentum now, doesn't he? He smells blood. He's like a shark right now. He knows he's weakening. He's digging him down to the body and landing hard power shots up top. And I'm talking about Crawford. Tried to shoot the uppercut that time as Khan came. Okay. At the conclusion of the fifth, Khan had a number of good moments, timing a left hook and scoring a pair of punches flush to the chin. Virgil Hunter, your entire career brought you to the highest heights that the sport can possibly offer. He is your godfather. You are as close to this trainer, Amir Khan, as any man with what he has. You know, at the end of the day, you know, me and Amir Khan were two different fighters, two different pedigrees, and uh, he's doing the best he can with what he has. He's the best rapper in this guy. Khan says, come forward, bud, come forward. Watch the sweeping backhand of Terrence Crawford. He's setting it up. There it is. And there's a looping right as well. Now Southpaw. Combination. Probing with the jab back to Orthodox. Probing with the jab. Looking for a right hand possibly to split the guard. Goes with a right uppercut. And there's a one-two from Khan. Give him credit. He was down in the first round. He's trying to hang in there. Oh, big left hand from Crawford. Uppercut. Right hook. Switching back in drama boy. He's yeah. taking some big shots tonight. Too much of that toughness ain't good though, Tim. And I tell I will tell you this about Virg. He's thinking his chin. It's, out a, in it's front. a panic shot. Yeah, it's a out panic front. Hand. Terrence Crawford will have something waiting for that. Left hand coming in. Just like there. Oh, got caught well, away. Lands one. There's a right hand from Amir Khan many times. As Crawford stalks. Everything was going Crawford's way. And he was on his way to another easy victory when the low blow occurred. There where he stepped back. I think it's low blow. Mm. After getting the win, Crawford made it clear who he wanted to be his next fight. And it was no other than the IBF welterweight champion, Errol Spence Jr. Well, you know, it's only one fight they talking about, and that's Spence. Whenever you're ready, I'm here. Meanwhile, Errol Spence, who had just defeated Mikey Garcia, was ready for some beef and fired some shots at Crawford. Crawford. Who has he fought? The only name fight you fight is York's game boy, the guy that he fought. I fought Lamar Peterson, Chris Algeria, Kel Brook. I mean, and how many fights you got? 30 some fights? You know what I'm saying? Like I said, he's a great fighter, things like that, but. You can't put him to me. Errol is known for his clean combinations and strong chin. Terence's most recent opponent, Sean Porter, had also fought Spence in the IBF welterweight title eliminator, but failed miserably to defeat the well-prepared Errol. Porter, on the other hand, seemed to be Spence's hardest opponent yet, and it showed. Porter felt he could defeat Spence by forcing a brawl with his skilled opponent taking away Spence's space to put together combos and counter-punching with his awkward technique. Well, Spence, off balance. Porter, but he wasn't there. It's a great fight right now. Porter's strategy mainly worked, especially in the third round, when he absorbed body shots to throw his own. That was a low blow right there, but also good body work. These punches are starting to stray a little low. But let me tell you, this is an incredible action fight right now. Oh, both 
Spence was doing a good job moving like that. Giving him different angles. He wasn't getting caught going straight back, which was good. This is classic Sean, uh, Sean Porter, though. You know, where he's all over you. He's swarming you. Well, those, those shots are going low. It's good left hand over the top. Oh! A furious action here in round three. In a chaotic three minutes of action, both fighters traded massive blows and then followed it up with an equally thrilling fourth round in which each fighter repeatedly rocked the other. He's landing the hard shots to the head right now. Porter's got the body shots, or Spence got the body shots, but Porter's landing the hard shots to the head. Oh, that's a very close fight. I got it tied up 38 to 38. We got to keep seeing what the judges are looking at here. Some of these shots are getting through from Sean. It's a lot of back and forth. One guy counters, the other guy counters right back. He's catching Arrow at the right time. But right now, Arrow's picking up the pace. He's doing the right thing. He's got Porter against the ropes, so Porter can't move, and he's doing some work against him. Now Porter's saying he's, yeah, he's turned him around. He's saying he wants to do that. Oh, there's that turn. He's got to tip that body when he makes the miss. Yeah, Porter spun him around once again. Final minute, round six. See Arrow Porter there. Arrow Spence did the right thing. You know, Porter was close to the ropes. He, oh. Oh, great nice right by Porter. Spence came back with his own counter left hook and now. Flip it, pivot, turn. That's what Kenny Porter just yelled out for his son. Oh, Spence is fight. He's missing something really special right now. Spence is saying, I'm going to knock you out. Porter saying, I'm going to knock you out. There is no. There's no stopping Sean Porter from coming forward, and Errol Spence is landing good shots as Porter is making his way inside. Oh, good body shot by Errol oh, Spence, but of course, he made a nice move off, kept his hands in close to diminish the effect of those body punches. It went through round 10, scheduled for 12, as they continue to go at it here in Los Angeles. The judges recognized that Spence was the more precise fighter throughout the contest. None of his punches were bigger than the left hand in the 11th round. For the third time, one minute remaining, and oh! And then Porter yells, let's go! Now he's got to be careful, Sean's got to be careful. He'll run into another one like that, and he may not get up. Furious action continues here in round 11. 30 seconds remaining. Right. More punches on Spence than Spence has ever taken in his career. Some more clearly getting some good shots in this round. 30 seconds left. Porter's fighting all the right, way right, to the right. wire. We saw another big right by Spence. Down to 20 seconds. Errol went on to win the bout by split decision, and an undisputed fight with Terence Crawford was now closer than ever. Errol Spence would go on and shoot some shots at Terence in an interview not so long after the split decision win over Porter. Avoiding Terence Crawford, what's your response to what he said over the weekend uh, in an interview? I mean, how am I avoiding him if I'm fighting in a unification fight with uh, Sean Porter? I mean, a top five welterweight, so, I mean, last time I remember it, the WBC ordered me and him to fight each other, and, you know, he didn't take the fight, so, I mean, nobody's avoiding Terrence Crawford, you know, there's big fish on this side, too, that, you know, I got to fry. I'm going to get these belts over here, then I'm going to come take Terrence Crawford belt, because I said I'm going to be undisputed welterweight champion of the world, so, the only way to make that happen is to take his belt, so, I mean, nobody's avoiding him. In 2019, both fighters proved that they were the best in the division and that an undisputed fight between them was anticipated from both sides, making it now clear that a clash between the two welterweights was not so long away as expected. But Crawford didn't want to train and wait until he could fight Errol, 
So instead, he got into the ring to defend his title and show Spence who is the real deal in this boxing division. Terence's opponent was now Egedeus Kavalaskas, a fighter that at the time of the bout had zero losses. Crawford fought cautiously at the outset. So here we go, round number one. Timmy, give me nice something. Sense. Probes, solves, that's, 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 and then undoes. You just said it. You know, he's going to take his time. He's going to box on the outside. Kavalaskas is a power puncher. So he needs a southpaw. He came out in the southpaw stance. So you want to focus on the front feet of both fighters. The front Luck foot. has proven that throughout his career. He has. He's very rare. He has equal skills with both the stance. You rarely ever see guys go to Crawford's body. They're not very quick. He doesn't really have a lot of creativity. Kowalowskis showed why there was reason to when he landed a big right early in the third round and then a couple more punches inside as Crawford tried to hold on. Crawford eventually took a knee, but Kowalowskis was not given credit for a knockdown. Number one challenger in the WBO. It's Ray Robinson. Yeah, that, that can throw you off when you, you see a guy who's always aggressive and then all of a sudden he's waiting and he's playing this this chess game with you, it takes a moment to kind of wrap your brain around that and make, oh, oh, Kavayaskis comes forward and Buck Crawford was hurt and the ruling that is slick, but Kavayaskis came straight ahead and pulled the trigger and got Buck Crawford. There he is, Crawford, what's getting to Terrence? Terrence wants to get to him. He must be smart. A right hand from Kavayaskis. That's the beauty of this game. All it takes is one punch. There's always a puncher's chance. When Terrence is counterpunching, he's coming out too wide. That's the reason why he counters. Crawford hit a strong shot early in the seventh, but then began replying, eventually catching Kowalowskis with a looping shot near the ear that knocked him to the ground. Terrence Crawford with Brian McIntyre. And again, I'm not sure if Kavioskis, if I do anything there. Look at that, look at that. That's what you gotta do right there. There's a left uppercut from Crawford. Steps right into that kitchen. He's smelling it now. He's sitting in the orthodox now. He smells the knockout. Now has a run. Oh, and Kavioskis comes back. Crawford ended it two rounds later, first setting up a right uppercut with a three-punch combination that dropped Kowalowskis to the mat. Terence and Errol would come face to face in the United States, and it didn't take long for things to heat up. <laughs> you know how much I weigh. That's what you mean. I'm not fat. I'm fat. I'm not fat, boss. That's fat. It don't matter. Yeah. Hey, it don't yeah. Matter. It don't matter. Grab, it hey, again, I, Grab it again, son. Grab it again. Grab it again. Grab it again. We talk about now. But you talking about how but big you is? It's fat. But how look at the Grab that. Like the yeah. I guarantee I'm crush you. Grab that. All right, let me ask I you a question. Grab that. Don't try to go to the body. Don't try that little. Don't try that. Hey, hey, you got nothing to do with this. It don't matter. On that, that's fat. You got hurt by getting pulled. That's fat. You got hurt by getting pulled. You got hurt by Campbell. You got hurt by Campbell. You got hurt by Campbell. And you got hurt by Campbell. And you got hurt by Campbell. Win. We seen we seen you get wobbly late. We seen you get wobbly. Then what? We seen you get wobbly. After Crawford and Spence finally met face to face, promoters started thinking if this was a good PPV fight to be made. But it all changed soon for the young Errol Spence Jr. In the early hours of October 10th of 2019, 
Errol, who was driving his Ferrari 488 Spider in Texas, came face to face with a life-threatening experience. Spence Jr., who was alone in the car, was driving at a very high speed. At one point, the truth lost control of the car and got ejected from it as the Ferrari rolled multiple times on the road. I'm in my uh, Ferrari driving and I really don't know what happened. I don't remember that night. To tell you the truth, I just seen the video of me flipping, you know, down the road and in the car and, you know, didn't see me fly out or anything like that. Just seen a surveillance camera of me falling out and, you know, gratefully, you know, my one of my friends was driving behind me and he had stopped and um, he seen me in the middle of the street. On May 21st, 2021, former eight division champion Manny Pacquiao made an announcement on social media that he would face the welterweight champion Errol Spence Jr. Errol came face to face with the biggest fight of his life. The boxer who was the toughest opponent of Floyd Mayweather, the Pac-Man, Manny Pacquiao. Spence, now training harder than ever, didn't even have Terence Crawford and their beef in mind. His eyes were on the Filipino champion who was heading to end his career. With just a few weeks until his mega showdown with Pacquiao on August 21st at the T-Mobile Arena in Las Vegas, Nevada, Spence Jr., was forced to withdraw from the fight due to a retinal detachment in his left eye. The unified welterweight champion then dropped his gloves and walked inside the operating room. Suspicion circulated that he had never been wounded in the first place. Bernard Hopkins, a former two-division champion and 2019 Hall of Famer, was among many who regarded Spence Jr. and his whole injury claim with skepticism. Um. But I, I just think, I just have some suspicions about this whole thing, to be honest with you. Um, because I just think that the way, the way, the way it manifests and came out suddenly real fast and no one knew it before, is it, to me just, and I've been around a long time and I understand certain things that's, I said because of other things. Um, I'll just say stay tuned if you hear something else other than what everyone was given or was told. Um, I think it's more to the story than what it is. Due to all the marketing behind the fight, it had to continue with another fighter. And that was no other than your Dennis Ugas. Ugas, a true underdog, went on to defeat the great Manny Pacquiao by unanimous decision. And still champion, your Dennis Ugas. Errol Spence, on the other hand, hasn't fought since his surgical operation and has been quiet ever since. The biggest chance of his life was lost forever. Terence Crawford, on the other hand, was preparing to fight Sean Porter in November of 2021 to retain his welterweight title. Coming to the fight, Terence in the back of his mind always had that ambition to fight Errol Spence, as no other opponent would give him the satisfaction he wanted. Porter's aggressive onslaught in the early rounds was effective, taking advantage of Crawford's traditional sluggish start as the champion gathered information to build up his withering attack as the fight progressed. Steals some early rounds. It creates a sense of urgency in Crawford, which may draw him into a fight instead of a boxing match. Thank <laughs> you. 
As Crawford dialed up his assault, Porter stepped up to the plate and matched Crawford punch for punch. Even though Porter battled his usual rough and tumble style of inside punching and lunging power blows, Crawford's changes remained as the rounds progressed. Here comes the turn, the pivot. There's Porter coming in with that relentless aggression that he's known for. Terrence covering up as Porter tries to get around that guard. Terrence smiles at him and pushes him away. Doesn't matter that it doesn't hurt. Crawford's exceptional abilities reached new heights as Porter slowed just a fraction and began to take control of the fight in the final third. Crawford's power ultimately turned the contest in the 10th round. Crawford followed up with a combination that resulted in a second knockdown. Porter's father and trainer, Kenny Porter, jumped on the ring apron in the 10th round when Porter climbed to his feet after pounding the canvas in rage. A now hungrier Crawford would go on and call out his number one rival in the post-fight interview for the last. What do you want next? Who do you want next? Well, you already know who I want. I I've been calling them out all day, you know what I mean? Maybe I'll go up to 154. Maybe if Spence get his tail out his butt, he'll fight me. You know what I mean? Whatever, you know what I mean? I will whatever. It wasn't about- The Errol Spence versus Terrence Crawford rivalry is something straight out of a Rocky movie. On the possible fight night, we could see a smarter Terence Crawford studying every single move of his opponent and trying to adapt. Spence, on the other hand, would go on and bring his more aggressive self out, a personality that has a hook so strong that we could only imagine what damage it could make to Crawford. Both are definitely the kings of the welterweight division. But in the end, only one person survives. And that is a question yet to be answered. This is Boxing Matrix. Thank you for watching.